five. We have engine start. Two, one. We have ignition and we have liftoff. Liftoff. 32 minutes after the hour and the shuttle has cleared the tower. Uh, inspiring down here, Ted. Uh, you know, having ridden on top, uh, I guess I can appreciate that end of a night launch, but uh, believe me, it's second best is to be here watching it. We have... We have some fires around the pad down it there. It sure does look that way. Uh, I'm not sure that they're that serious, but uh, maybe there's something we can see because it is at night time. Uh, we have gotten word, incidentally, as you probably heard, that they cannot return to Houston, uh, to Florida, they are cleared to press on to main engine cutoff. That's good news. It means they, uh... Ted? All right, our coverage of Space Shuttle Challenger will continue. Altitude's 57 nautical miles. Challenger's 236 miles downrange. On board the shuttle is a satellite that will be launched for the... Hey, Jason, we're aboard. It's on the anniversary. Everything is looking good. We can see the stars real brightly, and we're seeing a little flashes of light, which I guess are reflections off the bottom of the tank. Dick Truly, the mission commander, reporting everything looks good and they can see the stars. The weather's good up there. Roger that. As I was saying, there is a satellite that will be launched for the government of India on board. There are six rats. Challenger Houston. A snow making machine. Challenger now capable of reaching the car airport if two main engines fail. A contemporary Noah's Ark. Six minutes, ten seconds elapsed. Velocity, 13,750 feet per second. Altitude, 58 miles. Downrange, 336 miles. Bill Thornton spent uh, learning all about the care and feeding of mice. <laughs> <laughs> and praise that they don't uh, get loose seconds. on board. I don't, I don't suppose they have a rat trap up there. But they'll be testing a cage, so uh, to see how that works. And on future missions, they'll be conducting experiments with animals. And and we also uh, more have a, the uh, mid deck experiment that we've carried before from uh, McDonnell Douglas and Johnson yeah, Johnson. So we're going to test them go. Pharmaceutical experiment that uh, someday could lead to solving some of the problems of diabetics. Say. Yes, and on this flight, uh, for the first time, we'll be separating live uh, tissue cells from both uh, humans and animals, which is something we haven't done before. Previously, we've only uh, separated proteins as a demonstration. Oh, 
Roger, Miko. Miko was right on the second. Flight Dynamics Officer Willis Bolt says uh, main engine cutoff was nominal. Well, that was special. Bill, if you can hear me, I don't know what it looks like on television. What do you have because we have had some fire engines going out there right now. Um, we don't know quite what it is. Of course, we'll tell you that as soon as we do. Meantime, everything else is progressing just wonderfully. The main engine cutoff occurred exactly on time, which means that the orbiter is progressing towards orbit exactly where it's supposed to be right now, even though it did get off about 17, 18 minutes later. Then, as you well remember, we had a almost instant daylight, a very hazy morning daylight, but it truly was daylight over the entire uh, Kennedy Space Center at this point in time during the uh, actual replay. 50 seconds. Gene, was it as good as being inside one? Then you know better than that. Nothing, <laughs> nothing. Daytime or nighttime is as good as being inside one. But uh, I'm, it, it was very nostalgic for me today to, to watch this, and, and I, I'm happy for those guys. And I, and I still have to say again that one of the most exciting moments I have is about 5 to 15 minutes away when I see that first sunrise, those three new guys, five, four new guys. Well, I think we all had a great sight. It was a pretty show, as NASA promised us. Uh, the best news, of course, is that everything so far is also happening on time. Uh, the external tank separated okay. It will now fall to the ocean and disintegrate. And uh, we'll stick around and wait for the next one. Ted? Both very much. It has been, for a moment there, it was nip and tuck, but it's been a spectacular late midnight, post midnight. Rocket thrusters firing for about uh, two and a half minutes is coming up in just a few seconds. LOS, configure LOS. We'll see you at the car at 1 8. LOS meaning loss of signal, meaning that signal will picked up in Dakar, Senegal, in Africa. Been a okay, perfect mission so far. The Ohms burn has begun. It's been a, a great night. Ignition on both engines, and the burn looks good. And uh, Mort, uh, we you may have mentioned, but this is a big step forward for the uh, space program in demonstrating the night launch and uh, and hopefully uh, here in a few days a uh, night landing. Of course, this gives us quite a bit of operational uh, flexibility that we did not have before, and it will be very important. <laughs> it's kind of interesting today. The uh, NASA officials, including uh, Jim Abramson, uh, was saying that uh, it would be terrific to get a night launch behind us because the weather's always better at night, so we'll have <laughs> a greater opportunity to launch on time. And uh, I'm sure he is eating his words this evening. We had, uh, as we have said several times, that very, very big thunderstorm this evening, proving that uh, even generals can't uh, decide what the weather is going to be like prior to a launch. But certainly the uh, night uh, launch and landing capability will increase our operational flexibility and maybe give us a longer launch window, which will maybe uh, allow us to uh, deviate for the weather since we can't control that.